Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm asking, have you ever wondered why your gaming rig looks like a piece of art? Well, the first computers were just basically exposed wiring. The story of the PC case is actually quite a surprisingly interesting one. From industrial steel cages to RGB lit masterpieces. Stick around with me for a little while and you'll find out how a plain metal box evolved into the beating heart of modern tech. So we're going to start in an era that I'm going to call bare bones beginnings. So in the early 1960s and 70s, computers weren't inside anything. So picture massive steel racks of blinking LEDs, cables hanging like spaghetti, and absolutely no protective shell. Those machines lived in labs and not in living rooms. So protection and looks just basically didn't matter. When the first personal computers um, appeared, hobbyists got rather creative. So they slapped motherboards into um, wooden crates, metal tins, and sometimes even cardboard. Basically, anything that kept dust out and gave a place to mount a power supply, they would build their PCs within. Those early enclosures were purely functional. There was nothing about style. It was all about survival, essentially. The next era was the beige box revolution. So basically, everything changed in 1981 when IBM released the first PC. Its hallmark, well, it was a plain rectangular beige chassis that housed everything under one roof. So suddenly a case wasn't optional. It was actually mandatory. And the AT form factor defined things like motherboard size, where the mounting holes were, and the power supply placement itself. And then a few years later, ADX refined those dimensions, locking in things like the width, height, and mounting points. Um, and actually for decades, design priorities were purely for function. So cooling ducts, EMI shielding, and easy access for technicians were a priority. Aesthetics, well, they weren't really a concern. And that is why the world was flooded with identical beige boxes for the better part of the 80s and early 90s. Next, we go beyond the beige to identity and modding itself. By the late 90s, the PC stopped being simply just a tool. Gamers, designers, and early modders wanted their machines to say something about them. So first came clear acrylic side panels and custom paint jobs. And then people even progressed a little bit further with all of this, and they sanded, they primed, and they sprayed their cases, turning a bland box into a personal canvas. And then the gaming boom itself pushed the envelope even further. Bigger GPUs meant more heat, so designers added vented fronts, mesh panels, and space for liquid cool loops. And if you actually take a look back, the first water-cooled rigs looked slightly like sci-fi reactors, but then came the sleeper builds. So these had minimalist exteriors, hiding all of those monstrous internals. Then that was followed quite quickly by the RGB explosion. So things like programmable lighting turned cases into light shows, sync to music, and basically the market never looked back from there. So from plain paint to neon glow, the case became a st statement of identity and not just a container for all of your PC components. So now we have arrived at the modern marvels we see today. So Today's cases are engineering marvels. They juggle things like airflow, acoustics, and aesthetics, as well as sustainability and even intelligence. And this is all while shrinking in size. Um, airflow is now king, and the rise of hybrid mesh glass panels lets you see the internals while pushing the cool air straight out onto the GPU and CPU. And at the same time as all of this, Acoustic foam and anti-vibration mounts keep the noise down, well, as much as you can keep it down, um, and small form factor builds like Mini ITX and Nook style and even 2 liter SFF cases have come along, so that they let enthusiasts fit powerful rigs into a desk or inside a TV stand. 
and sustainability is actually finally entering the design language. Many manufacturers now use recycled aluminium, modular panels that snap on without screws, that's a personal favourite of mine, and lower power 80 plus gold PSUs to cut energy use. But probably one of the smartest um, arrivals are the built-in LCD screens that now show temperatures, fan curves, and even system stats. And you've also got AI-driven thermal algorithms that uh, boost fans only when needed. Also, in terms of cable management, you've got channels that hide everything in a tidy little tunnel if you want to have a clean build. So what's next in the future of cases? Well, imagine a case that reconfigures itself on the fly, that has magnetic panels that slide, You've got snap-in modules for storage, cooling, or even a built-in wireless charger. We can look to see things like augmented reality overlays that can project a holographic dashboard onto the case surface itself. Um, you could also show hotspots, performance metrics, or you could even have a virtual assistant guiding you through upgrades. Some designers are actually already experimenting with things like invisible PCs, ultra thin balls, uh, boards even, that embed into furniture, walls, or even mirrors. I think the aim here is that the computer becomes part of the environment rather than a separate box. But whatever the shape, the driving forces basically stay the same. User demand, thermal limits, and the desire to make a statement. The humble PC case will keep on evolving and I'll be here to document every twist and bring it to you. So that's it for today, guys. So we've gone from exposed racks to glowing towers. The PC itself tells the story of our tech culture. But I want to know which era is your favourite? The classic beige, the modders paint job, or the RGB lit future? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this timeline, please, please hit that like button and maybe share this with a fellow builder. Of course, subscribe for more deep dive tech stories. And actually, if you enjoyed this look back in time, maybe also check out my video on motherboard design evolution. That should be popping up right now. Again, thank you ever so much for making it this far. And thank you for watching. Take care, guys, and I will see you on the next one.